has got a really interesting lock from Lock Picking Lawyer. Sent me several different types, but I thought we'd take a look at this Magnum. This really is interesting. When you take a look at it, it almost leads you to believe that it, it is an abloy. But in fact, no, it's not. If you look closely, look down in there, you can actually see some wafer. So it's a it's a pretty complex wafer lock. Uh, here's what the key looks like on this one. You notice that the uh, uh, cuts do not line up, so this means the key can only go in one way, and they've indexed it with a flat spot. So in this case, it goes in with a flat spot. Well, if you were in Europe, it would be flat spot up. If you were in the U.S., it would be flat spot down. It will not go in the other way. It doesn't even enter the keyway. So flat spot, and then, of course, very, very smooth. And it doesn't come out while the key is upside down either. It only comes out the same way it went in there. So, pretty cool lock. Uh, let's see if we can get in here. It's a tiny, tiny little keyway. And there are five, look at the key, there are, it looks like five wafers. There are five cuts on each side of the key. So I'm thinking there are a total of ten wafers. Five on the top, five on the bottom. Let's see if we can get it picked. Nothing like a new challenge. It is not a challenge lock, per se, but it is different. All right. It's probably going to be a little bit difficult for you to see the keyway because it is kind of inset there. Let me see if I can find a good tension wrench. I've tried to fit this in before I started the video, and the only way that I could find that it would fit in there is actually hanging on the top of that keyway just like that. So it's kind of an odd angle, but hey, looks like it'll work. And since it's such a tiny keyway, the only pick I have that will fit in there, this is from uh, the uh, Sparrow's 4X kit. It's one of their hybrid picks, and quite honestly, I can't remember the name of it, but it, it's a tiny little pick that will go up inside of there. i got to put it in sideways and then rotate it. So let's see if we can get this thing to work. So in there, rotate around the warding. There we go. Apply tension. And let's see what we got here. This kind of... I'm going to treat it just like a normal pin tumbler, just looking for a binding pin. And i got to click on pin 3. Try to see if I can get it back in there and go through it again. And hopefully, when I get through picking the, one, the pins on one side, we'll get some kind of indication, maybe a core turn, slight turn, like a fault set. And if that's the case, then we'll go to the bottom. And that doesn't appear to be the case here. Everything is springy, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the bottom. So I'll turn the pick upside down. Again, slide it through there and give it a little turn. And then I'll just when I see if I can find something down here, binding. Try not to mess with my tension wrench there too much. And I got to click on pin two, or actually wafer number two. And everybody else is still just a little bit springy. So I'm going to go back up top so it's alternating. I had hoped we'd pick them all on one side first, but not the case. Okay, got to click on pin four there, but no turn on the core. No feedback, no counter rotation. There we go. I got a very slight turn on the core from pin three. Got a little click on him. I'm going to try to go back to the bottom. Alternate a little bit. I got to click on pin four. Try it again. And there we go. I just felt it break and felt a slight turn. Now if you look, if I can get my hand out of the way without dropping the tension wrench, here's the actuator. And so you'll notice that when I turn the keyway, it turns. And also, when I turn it, now, I can, now you can see it's slightly offset. And now we're turning. But watch this. It rotates halfway. Uh, that may be enough to open the lock. It only moves the actuator one half of rotation. So my bet would be that on this Magnum, you probably would have to pick it twice. And another proof that the uh, thing is picked, let me get this back a little bit. Come on, baby. There you go. 
All right, notice it was with the flat part towards that side of the lock and the key no longer goes in. Now it goes in upside down. So definitely picked, but I think we got to pick this baby twice to get it completely picked and to open the door. Anyway, there you go, the Magnum 10 wafer lock, lock picking lawyer, thank you, sir. And you know what I think I'm going to do? He did give these to me, so I'm going to go ahead and probably cut this open. And that way we'll have still have one good half. I'm going to open one up and so we can take a look and see what the inners on this thing look like. I've never taken one apart before. All right, guys, we're going to learn this together. I cut this in half. That looked like it was some kind of hardened steel, maybe for anti-snap, but I can tell you that is really soft stuff. Really, it took about five strokes with a hacksaw, so very soft metal. Um, I think we can probably just pull this dude off here. It's got a little play in it. He says. Maybe we can pull it, just pull it out or push it out. Yes, there we go. Alright, I got no idea what's going to happen here, guys. I am going to hold my finger on those two plastic pieces right there. And there goes the ball bearings from the side. Yeah, crap, there are two wafers that were in the front. So we have a wafer and a spacer. And that's probably what the rest of these are as well. We got some more ball bearings on that side. I'm just going to dump them out. So the ball bearings probably lock up in these grooves in the side. And when the wafers are lined up, let's see if we can salvage this just a little bit. And try to get the key in there. Now remember, it's not going to go in all the way. Oop. We need to put it in from the other side, dummy. Come on, Bill. He's going, but slowly. <laughs> I'm trying not to lose control of those plastic wafers. And I'm putting too much pressure on them to get the key in, I believe. There you go. Had the key in wrong. Okay, so it does turn there. The wafers are now depressed. You can see on the top, let me get rid of those plastic things. I will keep my finger on the bottom. You notice how on the top they're all perfectly flush, and if we take one of these little ball bearings, he probably fits down the side of a little groove on the side of those wafers. Focus, baby. There we go. So when the key is out, you notice how he kind of sits up there? He says, oh, now my finger lets the wafers out. And now he kind of sits up and he would fit inside of that groove and prevent the core from turning. So pretty interesting thing it is. Let's see, like I said, there are actually one, two, and then there's one on the front. So there are five wafers on one side, and two, three, four. One, two, three. It looks like there were four on one side and five on the other, unless my eyes are deceiving me. So not quite as complex as we thought. I wonder why we had only three ball bearings on that side and all four over there. Probably because of the... Uh, Lack of one wafer would be my guess. Anyway, there you go. There's how the Magnum works, more or less. Let me go ahead and really screw this up, see if we can dump these guys out of here. Probably not going to happen. There we go. There's what one of them looks like. They do not have the profile. So these are wide open. So that allows the company to have different key profiles and only use one key profile wafer on the very front to limit which keys will fit into which locks. So pretty cool idea. And it seemed to work. Anyway, there you go, the Magnum Wafer Lock. Thanks, guys, and Lockpicking Lawyer, appreciate you sending this to me. Stay safe, guys. Stay legal.